Welcome to our lecture online. In some instances, it is more convenient to use a different method to calculate the torque. And let me show you what that different method is. Again, we have an object that has a length L, is attached at one end so that it can pivot or turn about that point, and a force at the other end is applied, which then causes a torque. We can then say that the torque can be calculated by multiplying the, the magnitude of the force times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point. What does that mean? Well, let's continue with a line in the direction of the force where it's applied to the object. So let's continue that here. We draw a line like so. This is called the line of action of the force. This is in the same direction and in which the force is acting. If we now draw a line from the pivot point to that line of action of the force, and we make sure that the line touches the line of action force perpendicular to the line, we get this line right here. You can see here that this is perpendicular to the line of action of the force. This is called the perpendicular distance. If we now multiply the magnitude of the force times this length right here, this is the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, then we get the torque. Now, how do you find that perpendicular distance? Well, notice that you have a right triangle. If you draw a line right here, this way, we draw this line here, and then we have the D, what we call perpendicular. This forms a right triangle. Here's the 90 degree angle. This is the hypotenuse of that triangle, and this is the adjacent side to this angle right here. This theta here is the same as this theta right here. In other words, we can see that d perpendicular is equal to the hypotenuse L times the cosine of the angle theta. Then all we have to do is plug this into the equation. We can then see that the torque is equal to the magnitude of the force times the length of that object or the distance from where the force is acting to the pivot point times the cosine of theta. Notice that you get the exact same equation as what we saw in the previous video. The difference here is that we didn't work with the cosine of theta on the angle right here. We simply found that perpendicular distance. Now you may say, well, that seems a little bit more complicated. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's just actually easier depending upon how the situation is set up and how the drawing of what you're trying to find the torque of is set up. So this is actually a very good method to use. As an example, let's say the length here is 4 meters, the angle is 30 degrees, the magnitude of the force is 20 newtons. All you have to do now is say this is equal to the force of 20 newtons times the length of 4 meters times the cosine of 30 degrees. And with a calculator again, that would be 20 times 4 times 0.866 equals, and that gives us a torque equal to, rounded off, to 69 newtons. Same result as we got before. Same equation, essentially, it's just obtained in a different way. You can see that there's value sometimes in approaching it this way. And that's how it's done.